school. I've got another little task that I'm going to do today. Um, I'm just going to give the chassis work a bit of a rest. It's pretty much there. Um, but I thought I'll do some other stuff today. And what I want to do is I want to clean up these um, Lucas FW2 uh, motors. Big shout out to uh, Steve. You know who you are for assisting me here. Um, but what, what they uh, basically, what I want to do here is take the covers off, inspect inside, you know, clean components like the shafts and so on, get rid of all the gunk on there, uh, change the grease in there. But effectively, as far as the electrical components go, I'm not going to touch any of that. Uh, these, these two I've tested and seem to work. This one doesn't. And it might be just because of the grit inside or whatnot. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one here that doesn't work. Now I've already started pulling out um, the front pieces, which are pretty much, you know, these screws in here. And then you've got this um, support arm. And of course you've got the park. So those things come out. And now what I've got to do is remove these two slotted screws. But before I do that, I'm going to give this area a bit of a clean. Now, um, for these external cases and so on, I'm just going to use things like degreaser. But obviously, I've got to be very careful about using anything like that near the electrical components. So I'm just going to be uh, just take it easy and clean this slowly. Right, I've taken the two screws out. This one on this side was... Um, fairly well stuck and as a result unfortunately I've done a little, little bit of damage to it which I'm going to have to fix. One thing to note um, and I think that was because of um, something I was doing wrong when you're using a screwdriver make sure the screwdriver actually fits inside the housing because it's because that those screws well, those nuts, I should say, are actually within the housing. So see how my screwdriver here fits inside? Just. I was using a screwdriver that actually wouldn't fit inside, and so what was happening is the screwdriver was kinking. If you can imagine something like that, it was kinking out and therefore slipping and causing the um, damage to the, to the head there. Okay. Right, so next step, I've already taken the three screws out here too. Right, just remove that split pin, there it is over there, and I'm just going to gently release that spring, there we go. And there you go, crusty and dry. Look at that. That's why it's not pro probably working. It's just full of this crud. Look at it. It's just like um, like powder. Just gave it a very very quick just to get rid of all the initial crud. So now uh, these things are going to start coming apart so you've got the arm there right, so I managed to get this unit free it was getting stuck on the little ridge there where the circlip should go or the um, split pin so now I'm able to withdraw the entire lot out just going to put that in here for the moment Coming out. Just uh, gave it a bit more of a clean. Um, I've decided not to take that out, but what I noticed was that the shaft underneath, which belongs to this motor here, this was hardly spinning, so obviously it was jammed with, with crud and so on. So by, by me giving it a bit of a clean in there, I'm actually able to um, make this one work. So for example, I've got the negative to the battery, I've got
got the positive over here. I know it looks a bit dicey, but and you'll notice that as soon as I um, put the power through, there she goes. So I've just given it a bit of a, um, a clean and then using the air compressor just made sure that there was no um, moisture stuck in there. So now the next step for me will be to grease this area up and also these components here. Okay, so in order to get this working, make sure you've got the earth, which is, which is um, and I know I'm using a red cable, but that's just for here. So the earth is on the casing. You've got the power supply that needs to go to there and then you've got to bridge these two here, those two terminals. So I've been just using a screwdriver to kind of bridge the two terminals there like that. There you go. Part the second one. Interestingly, this one looks like it has been serviced uh, some time in the past. You can see how the <clears throat> inner casing is actually quite clean. The grease is actually quite clean. The gasket seems to be relatively new. So that's, um, that's quite good. It's really good. Also, just so that you can see here, there's the circlip and the washer and so on that goes on to the base of the of the shaft here. Remember in the in this one here I put a split pin in there. As I say it looks in pretty good nick. I just grabbed some of this um, some of this grease and it's already started to almost solidify a bit there so it is still a bit old. That's okay, that's all part of it. While I'm pulling this apart, I've noticed that to remove some of the items, like I've already removed this, the, the, uh, the gear for example, that was really, really wedged in, as in, as in stuck. And this is the same here. Like, like even though the other one, the first one that I did, had old grease and everything else, um, this one really is like, no wonder it's not working. The whole thing is almost like seized. So it's another thing to be mindful of that... Um, if it's not working, it generally it might not mean that's the motor. It could be the fact that these components in here are sleeved. Uh, investigation. So what I've done is I've loosened these two bolts in the back here, which effectively means this housing is loose, which then makes the entire motor system loose as well. So down here, for example, I can you can see here that I'm, that's moving quite nicely. There's, it's not stuck there, but this gear here. That is really stuck. I can't get that out. It's not even budging. So when I was trying to make the motor turn, obviously it wasn't turning because this gear here is completely seized. And there we go. So with that out of the way, I'm able to then re-tighten these two top nuts here. But before I actually do that, there's actually play. Uh, you, I don't know if you can see that. I'll just see if I can hold still and move the casing. Wait a second, I'll just loosen her up a bit. Here we go. You can see how there's play there. So what... I'm going to do is I'm spinning the motor around like this until I get a nice smooth action because basically I don't want it to be binding if you know what I mean so just keeping it nice and smooth and then nipping them up as I'm going I set it up it's all greased up you can see here Look, as I said before, I'm no electrician. I'm not doing the back end bit. All I'm doing is applying a little bit of logic, making sure things aren't seized. 
Of course, if the motor itself was cactus, well then that's a different story. You would have to go out and get somebody who, who can do that. Well, I would anyway. Um, but thankfully that's not the case. It's all quite good. And now those two units are ready for reassembly. And then I'll see, get on to this last one here. I think that's about it that I can cover. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video. If you've got any comments or anything like that, by all means, let me know. Um, but yeah, aside from that, as always, thanks very much for watching.